want to point out a, a few of those. Uh, the Blue Christmas service uh, Tuesday at 6.30, uh, sponsored by First and Mayo, but that is at First at 6.30. Uh, Friday we'll be having our Christmas Eve uh, communion and candlelight service here in the sanctuary at 7.30. And just make note that the church office will be closed uh, from Christmas Eve till New Year's. And the Epiphany Children's uh, presentation will be Sunday on January the 9th. And the children will be practic practicing for that uh, following the children's uh, message uh, today downstairs. Jessica, if you don't care, we'll take the children down for that. Christy, Christy should be down there, and uh, they'll be practicing for that. Are there any other announcements that need to be brought to our attention? Good morning, friends. the wrong way I know it's been one of those mornings <laughs> you feel that you feel the tension of hurry up and wait the fact that you are here this morning tells me that you need a minute like me to pull yourself together before we embark on this week's journey together toward Christmas toward the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ in whose name we gather and in whose name we worship what a joy to be able to call one another into worship as we look in our bulletin to the Gospel of Luke this morning and we echo Mary's words of the Magnificat. Would you respond in the bold print? Actually, we lead together, a little reversal here. We lead in the bold and then, and then respond accordingly with the bold on into the call to worship. Let's say this together. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. God has looked with favor on us, for we are the servants of God. The Mighty One has done great things, and holy is God's name. We await the birth of the Christ child, and God is about to do a new thing. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Holy Christ, descend on us, we pray, as we gather here in this space Unite our hearts, Holy Father, in worship, in spirit, and in truth. As we abide here in your presence, God, may your light illumine any dark places in our hearts. And may we be true worshipers today in the name of Jesus Christ, who is and was and is to come again. In his name we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, meet us here. In this place, as we greet one another, as we welcome God, so too are you welcomed here. We want to stand and greet one another, bringing the peace of Christ here in this place. And then if you would remain standing as we sing our hymn of praise, O come all ye faithful, share with one another this morning the peace of Christ. Peace to you. I like that, Jenny. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 3 as we stand and sing, O come, all ye faithful.
draw your attention as you are seated to our Advent wreath this morning. In this season of Advent, the time when we get ready to celebrate the mystery of Christmas, the time when we are all on the journey to Bethlehem. Who will lead us? Who will show us the way? The light of hope, the light of peace, the light of joy has been our light. They show us the way to Bethlehem. They show us the way to the light. They show us and lead us today to the light of love. I want to invite our children, if you would, to come forward. Miss Jessica is going to, uh, after we light the Advent candle, anyone who wants to go downstairs, you don't have to. If you don't want to, you're welcome to stay here and worship up here, or you can join in worship downstairs with Miss Christy and Miss Jessica as they prepare for you to tell the story of the nativity of Jesus' birth of Christmas on our Epiphany Sunday celebration. And I would like to ask Sadie and Will if they would light the candles today. Will, would you mind to get the light as I share this reading? And then go down and get the light from the altar and bring it up here as we watch together the light. We're going to light four candles today, all the purple ones. Which one is left? And the one pink one. And if we light the four around, then what color will be left? Yeah, there's one in the middle that still needs to be lit. Do you know when we will light that candle? On Christmas Eve, when we remember Jesus' birth. Will and Sadie are lighting for us the light of hope, the light of joy, the light of peace, and today the light of Wait now for Christmas Eve to come to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Hear this reading. Let your light shine. Let your spirit soar. Throw open your mind. Hand over your heart. Here it comes. Love. It shines in the darkness. It sings in the shadows. It will not cower and cannot be contained. It was the hope of the saints, the call of the prophets. It was the fire in the belly of John the Baptist and the courage of the Mother Mary. A lamp in the window, a beacon on a hill, a star in the night sky. Love, you lead us home. We light today this candle of love with the candles of hope, joy, and peace. May it light the way to Bethlehem. Would you respond with me as we say together, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Thank you, Jessica and Christy, for coordinating that for us. We look forward to seeing your presentation on January 9th. So we go into our time of sharing our prayer joys and concerns. Uh, our birthdays this week, a lot of Christmas birthdays. Uh, Tammy Barker on the 19th. Today, Bob Pack also, happy birthday today. Allie Fairchild on the 20th, uh, Mary Johnson on the 21st, Jeff Burke on Christmas Eve the 24th, and Judy Pratt on the 25th. Judy Pratt's a Christmas baby, so happy birthday <laughs> to each one this week. <coughs> Are there any other anniversaries or birthdays we've left out? Any joys or prayer concerns anyone would like to share?
Go ahead, Mark. It's good to see you here with us. I know you've been having some blood pressure problems. and Roberts coming home for Christmas today. Sorry, for that. they're driving from Florida. Yeah. Okay. Just remember all those who are grieving this season, um, and uh, as you do, especially remember our daughter Kathy, and she's been grieving for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, just remember us as well. It, it ends today. I would add to that just so that you are prepared, Mayo Church, our Christmas Eve offering, our finance team and administrative council voted that that be 100% designated this year to go to the communities in Western Kentucky uh, through United Methodist Committee on Reliefs, our Uncore, Uncore Missions, and our conference office who are already there uh, providing shelters and food and uh, meeting the needs of the people that are there in the community. So keep that in mind as you come to Christmas Eve, we will receive um, an offering to benefit that community as well.
Any unspoken requests? It's a show of hands. Thank you. Lauren? We have one online. Richard Mullins is asking for prayers for his wife, Monty. Um, she's having a medical procedure tomorrow. Say that one more time. Richard Mullins' wife, Monty, is having a medical procedure tomorrow. Anyone else? If we will turn then in our hymnals for our prayer hymn, number 242. Just a reminder that you may remain seated for number 242. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O holy God, our Emmanuel, our God who is with us, even now as we wait your birth, as we wait your return and the second coming, God, you came to us long ago as a helpless babe, weak in our flesh, as one in need of human love and care. And God, as you grew, you taught us how to love, how to care for one another. God, help us to hold on to that childlike wonder, especially this week, to the amazement of the gift that we celebrate and remember at Christmas time. Help us to hold on to love, to help us to love one another and to love our neighbors. God, guide our feet in the way of peace as only you who are the Prince of Peace can lead us. God, to help us now by laying down our lives for one another and by laying down our burdens that we serve you and in turn serve one another. God, we thank you for this space to be able to open our mouths, to be able to share our hearts with one another. God, in these tender moments of prayer, draw near to us. In your mercy, O oh Lord, 
hear our prayer. God, hear us as we pray for all who will be traveling this week for our families whom we have named, for those that we hold in our hearts. For travel mercies, O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, for the Burke family, for your provision for Tim, for his healing, to continue, we pray. For Jeff, for Barb's continued healing, and for the Burke family, in your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, for all those who are preparing to celebrate Christmas in medical care and procedures for all who are in cancer treatments this, se this season. For people whose lives are turned upside down, especially for the names of Monty Mullins, for Richard and their family, for my friend Florina Kim Kimbler, for all these, O oh Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh God, for all who grieve this day and who carry this grief into this week. For those who will gather in the First United Methodist Church sanctuary with this burden. We pray especially for them. We pray, oh God, for all who are grieving deep ache and loss. We pray for the Hebrewan family. We pray especially for Katie Bohm and for her family. In your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, for the good work and efforts that we are able to witness here in our state, we thank you, God, for our neighbors. We thank you for the response. And God, we ask that you would prompt us to do more. Holy Spirit, lead us to be your hands and feet on the ground to our neighbors to send hope, to send peace, to send joy, and to send love, to send light into the dark places. For all those, O oh God, who are working in these disaster efforts for the communities of Dawson Springs and Mayfield and all those in Western Kentucky, for those who are driving today from, from the college for those efforts and for Greta. We thank you, God, for this spirit. We know, oh God, that it comes from you. And we ask that you would hear our prayer in your mercy. And that you would hear all these prayers, oh God, through the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. say that again because it's too beautiful to mess up. Oh, come, O oh bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Dispel the shadow of the night and turn our darkness into light. Rejoice.
first scripture reading this morning uh, is Psalm 130 and can be found in your pew Bible on page 606. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, uh, if you can't be here to give, you may uh, mail your offering to PO Box 669, Paintsville, Kentucky, or online at uh, mailchurch.org. So as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, may we reflect on how gracious God has been to us.
Lord, you lift us up and have blessed us with the ministry of this church. We thank you for our pastors and elders and teachers who nurture us spiritually. We thank you for each member who uses their spiritual gifts to bless others. We thank you for the rich fellowship we enjoy with each other and with you. We give our tithes and offerings to you now to support the ministry of this church in our community and worldwide. I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge uh, in your bulletin those who have given a, a poinsettia in memory or in honor this morning uh, to be able to add to the beauty of the decorations of the sanctuary here for the Christmas season. Uh, those are in your bulletin. Um, I'm going to ask James if you would, for the people online, if you would just show a picture of that. We'll have that in the in the comments and if you would like a, a bulletin please reach out to me but so many of you who gave those gifts so be sure to take a moment and to read through those uh, we know that uh, that's an offering of your heart and I want to begin our time together with a little story uh, from one of my favorite tellings of the Bible it's the Jesus storybook Bible if you've been attending here very much you know that it's uh, one of my uh, favorite books, and I reference it often. I love the way that it leads us in to the story of Jesus Christ and reminds us that Jesus was there all along, that every story we have heard up until now throughout the Old Testament has led us here to Jesus. This is the way that author Sally Lloyd-Jones prepares us for this week. She says, have you ever been to a party that lasted a whole week? How about a sermon that went on all day? You're not going to get that here from me. But she says, well, that's what happened to God's people after they came home from being slaves. So this kind of catches us up, I feel like, to where we are now coming into the New Testament and the Gospel of John. She says, they had forgotten how God wanted them to live. They had forgotten who they were supposed to be. So Ezra and Nehemiah read them the rules that God had given to Moses. But something odd happened. The more the sermon went on, the sadder they all got. Why? Was the sermon that boring? No, not really. It was strange, you see. As Ezra read the book of rules, it worked like a mirror. It showed them what they were like. And they didn't like what they saw. They saw that they had not been living the way that they should. They saw that they were cruel and selfish. We've blown it, they cried. Surely God will punish us. They thought they knew what God was going to do, but they didn't. Of course, they might have picked up a clue from Ezra's name, which means help is here. And even a stronger clue from, Ezra, from Nehemiah's name because his name means God wipes away our tears. And that, as you'll see, is just exactly what God was getting ready to do. Ezra looked at God's children. Great hot tears were welling up in their eyes and streaming down their cheeks. He stopped his sermon mid-sentence and shut the book. And he said, we're going to have a party. He shouted. And so that's what they did. All week long, Ezra said to God's people, God wants you to be happy. So all day, they listened to stories about the wonderful things God had done for his people. How God made the world. How God gave a special promise to Abraham. How God rescued them from slavery. How God spoke to Moses and showed them how to live. How God brought them to a special land. How God rescued them, no matter what, time after time, over and over again, because of God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And they remembered. They remembered how God had always, all through the years, been loving God's children, keeping God's promise to Abraham, taking care of them, forgiving them, even 
when they disobeyed and even when they ran away from God, even when they thought they didn't need God. And then God told his children something more. He said, I can't stop loving you. You are my heart's treasure. I lost you, but now I'm coming back for you. I am like the sun that gently shines on you, chasing away darkness and fear and death. You'll be so happy. You'll be like calves running free in an open field. And I'm going to send my messenger, the promised one, the one you have been waiting for, the rescuer. He is coming, so get ready. It had taken centuries for God's people to be ready, but now the time had almost come for the best part of God's plan. God himself was going to come, not to punish his people, but to rescue them. God was getting ready to wipe away every tear from every eye, and the true party was just about ready to begin. Isn't that beautiful? I felt like that so appropriately wraps up for us where we've been in the Old Testament in our narrative lectionary. Johnny said this morning as I turned in the Bible, I always mark where I'm going to be preaching from, and he said, we've been in the Old Testament so long I was starting to wonder if we were United Baptist. (laughs) But today we turn the page, and we turn the page, friends, to the Gospel of John. For several weeks now, we've been reading from the prophets with their concerns and promises for the people in exile, looking for God's presence and call in unfamiliar territory. And today, we transition from the Hebrew Bible to the the New Testament. From now through Easter, we'll be reading in this gospel according to John, who is sometimes called the beloved disciple. This gospel was written between 90 to 100 CE to a community that was struggling with how to differentiate themselves in an increasingly hostile environment. They no longer fit into most of the synagogue life, but they were also threatening to the Roman Empire. Each of the four gospels have a very unique perspective. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Terry Peterson, who's a commentary writer that I enjoy reading, points out this. She says, we might think of John as looking at Jesus from above, from a cosmic perspective, seeing a bigger picture rather than small, immediate details. She kind of divides the Gospels up in the perspectives as they tell the story of Jesus. She says, Mark kind of writes from the perspective of right beside Jesus, practically hand in hand, close in details and actions. Matthew kind of writes from a behind perspective, looking at Jesus through the lens of the Old Testament. Luke, she says, the gospel writer, writes from just ahead, looking back, sort of like a historian would. But John, she points out, writes from above, seeing how God and the cosmic picture of the narrative of the gospel of Jesus Christ, how it all comes together. I am delighted to be in this journey in John's gospel with you. It is one of my favorite gospels to read. We'll hear from the very beginning as this gospel opens with a a prelude of sort, an overture um, that hints at themes that are to come, and that's where we rest today. I'm going to be reading from the first chapter Beginning at verse 1, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the text today, John 1, 1 through 18. It is in your pew Bible if you want to follow along on page 1041. Hear now this prelude to Christ in the world. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light 
shines in the darkness, John says, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but born of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. I love the way Eugene Peterson writes this. The word moved in to the neighborhood. Right there where we were. We have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I'm, I said, He comes after me, ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made God known. Beloved, this is the word of God. For we, the people of God, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, how good it is today for you to shed light on us here as we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ at Christmas. God, we thank you for this covenant promise that is made true in Christ. We ask, God, that you would make us attentive now to your Holy Spirit, who is here with us. God, speak words of life, words of light into our hearts. And, O oh God, be with me, the one who preaches, that my words and meditations would be pleasing to you, O oh God, for you are my rock and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. What a beautiful musical interlude of poetry that John gives us this morning as we prepare for this busy, busy week. I know that even being here, are you like me? You've got your to-do list. Maybe, you're, maybe you're, you're working on things right now. Does anybody right now have something in your shopping cart on Amazon or Walmart.com? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I felt it. I feel that, that rush, that busyness, this last, <laughs> shame on you, this last minute preparation to hurry, 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 and get it all done, right? So often we treat the coming of Christ, we treat the New Testament as if we are introducing Jesus into the world, which is hysterical, really, when you stop and think about it. We, we try in this busyness to say, and how this week can we fit Jesus in? And what John reminds us is, Jesus fit us in. Jesus came down. The word God incarnate comes to us. And so if we aren't ready for Christmas, that's okay. Because hear me when I say Christmas is ready for us. Amen? Christmas is ready for us. We celebrate today the word made flesh, who was in the beginning, who was and is and is to come. Uh, Singer-songwriter Jill Phillips has one of my favorite uh, Christmas songs called You Came Down, and she writes, O Savior of our fallen race, O brightness of the Father's face, O Son who shared the Father's mind before the world knew day or night, O Jesus, very light of light, our constant star 
in sin's deep night. Now hear the prayers your people pray throughout the world on this holy day. You came down to a stable and a manger, a lowly birth, not a kingdom or a crown. This is the Savior in whose name we gather, in whose name we prepare our hearts to celebrate. It's like Jesus is saying, can you hear me now? You know, I love that. When I'm driving out in, in near Flat Gap and I drop, I drop a call, I, I feel like almost it's like we were on the phone, God was on the phone, and all of a sudden we lost signal somehow and we forgot. And so Jesus comes closer. Not only closer, he comes among us and dwells as the word made flesh and then God goes even closer and he dwells in us and he says can you hear me now we often try again to fit Jesus into our already existing stories instead of allowing Christ's birth to be the place from which our stories create are created are begotten. In Adam Hamilton's The Journey book, which we've been reading in our Wednesday night Bible study, he takes us walking this road to Bethlehem. And I'm going to share this with you as he has experience from being there on the ground, walking this path that Mary and Joseph would have walked as he documents the way that they traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. He says, I traveled the way of the patriarchs myself, and I was moved by this thought. In following this route that Mary and Joseph traveled, they would have traveled through Samaria. The Holy Family would have been retracing 1,600 years of biblical history. Isn't that incredible? It was in this area of Samaria, in the center of this, in the country, that God appeared to Abraham and promised to give this land to his descendants. It was here Jacob saw angels ascending and descending to and from hev heaven at the Tower of Babel. And Mary and Joseph's caravan made camp near springs and wells each night that had been used since the time of the patriarchs, including Jacob's well. They passed the place where Joseph, the son of Jacob, whose story we recall from the Old Testament, was buried after his bones were brought back from Egypt. They came to Shiloh, where Joshua had set up the tent of meeting in the Ark of the Covenant. And they walked where the great early prophets Samuel and Elijah and Elisha ministered. They followed the path of the Assyrian army when it came to destroy the northern kingdom of Israel and where the armies of Babylon marched as they invaded Judea and Jerusalem itself and carried away its people into exile. But they also retraced the steps of the exiles whose return was singing unto Zion after the exile was over. God walked with his people through all these journeys. Imagine Mary and Joseph. Mary, nine months pregnant, walking that path from Nazareth to Bethlehem. What an incredible insight that we have had these past few months as we, as we have visited these place. And now today, God's story is made known in the person of Jesus Christ as John gives us this beloved view from above of the word coming down and being made flesh. As we sit here, we're, we're thinking, I, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready yet. I've had so many people ask me, are you ready for Christmas? What does that even mean? For us, it means, it, are your shopping lists, is your, are your to-do list checked off, right? It means, do you have everything put together? Are you ready for Christmas? I had somebody uh, tell me this, this week in the office, uh, Lauren and I were meeting with a, a, a friend of ours who we've been trying to help get into some housing, and uh, he was just completely anxious because he felt like his time was running out. He has a, 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 some assistance, but there's a deadline to it, and he has to 
has to find something before this deadline passes. And uh, he was talking about his faith. And he said, now listen, I'm a believer. And he said, as a matter of fact, I used to preach. <laughs> and we started sharing our stories a little bit and connecting with one another through the unity of the Spirit of Christ. And he said something to me that's so remarkably frightening. He said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be back in church I'm, as soon as I can, as soon as I can get all this taken care of, as soon as I can get, get my life together, then I'll be back in church. And I said, that's crazy. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Please come to church now. Let us be with you in this, whether you're together or not. Come, come. Stop reading and looking in the mirror at all the bad things that have gone wrong and come to the party. Come to the party. Come. Celebrate. You don't have to get it all together. Not this week. Not ever. That is the good news of Christmas. That is the good news of God coming among us. That is the good news of Emmanuel. God says to us, ready or not, here I come. As a matter of fact, I was already here. Can you hear me now? Now you can see me. No one ever has. But I'm doing a new thing. And I'm shining light in the darkness. I think of when the light streams through my window. I get aggravated sometimes if I don't have time to clean. And uh, all of a sudden it's a sunshiny day. <laughs> and it's better for me to just pull the curtains and ignore the dust that has settled, right? I, I'm like, mm, nope, I don't want to see that today. That's how that feels when we're waiting to get it all together. We're waiting for our list to be complete. Friends, open up the windows. Marvel in the dust that has settled there. Let the light shine. Let it shine on the truths that we want to ignore in our lives. Light can help us see where we need to clean things up in our lives and in the world. We can see these hard truths. And guess what? We can welcome God's grace right in the dust, right in the middle of the rubble, right in the middle of the sin, ready or not, the light has come. Let it shine. Let it shine. May it shine today in the name of our beloved Christ. Amen. I want to invite you, if you would, to do as John has invited us to do, to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, to receive him, and to have the power today to be called children of God. Children who were not born, not of blood, of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of the will of of God. God welcomes you and welcomes me today. Would you stand and affirm your faith in the Nicene Creed on page 880? Let's confess together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. closing hymn of invitation as the Holy Spirit continues to work in and among us and through us is to keep looking, keep looking, keep watching, keep awake to be ready, not for Christmas, but to be ready for Jesus. Let's sing together our closing hymn, number 202, People Look East. Dream. 
receive this blessing as you go. Go humming that the Lord is coming. What a beautiful commission. Go now in the peace, in the hope, in the joy, in the love of Christ, God, who was in the beginning. Go before you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.